industrial and commercial sites can pollute our natural environment. However, today society isn't prepared to accept the level of damage that was caused in the past. As a result, your company's corporate reputation will be damaged if you don't take your environmental responsibilities seriously. More and more investors and fund managers take environmental reputation into account when making decisions about the public companies they invest in. The embarrassment of press headlines, an unlimited fine or even a prison sentence following a prosecution for a pollution incident would be bad enough for any organisation, publicly or privately owned, but the knock-on financial consequences to your company could be even more damaging, with loss of business having a direct effect on your bottom line. So it makes good business sense to manage your environmental responsibilities and maintain a green image. It's an important factor in giving you a competitive advantage in today's economic climate. This was illustrated in some research we commissioned that found that companies with good environmental management are more profitable. We are responsible for protecting and improving the environment in the United Kingdom. We help to create a better place by improving the quality of the air we breathe, the water we use and the land on which we live. We also help to protect wildlife from pollution that can affect their habitat and their food. We can also work with you by giving you advice about how you can protect your local environment. We can advise you how to reduce the waste you produce. This lowers your operating costs and also helps you to reduce the risk of a pollution incident happening on your site. We can also give free advice on all areas of pollution prevention. This will help you carry out an environmental review of your site so you can put an action plan in place to help you prevent pollution or deal with accidents safely if they happen. All small businesses have a responsibility to comply with environmental reg regulations. A lot of them don't comply because they don't know what their duties are and if one can raise awareness then they will know and I'm sure most of them will comply. If small and medium sized businesses can reduce pollution it will also help their costs and therefore that will help their profits so particularly in the areas of waste and energy they can get some quite good savings. Pollution prevention makes good business sense because if you get prosecuted you're going to have a bad reputation you're also going to get a fine so if you actually do the work beforehand it'll be cheaper in the long run. A good knowledge of all the drainage systems on your site is necessary to prevent pollution. You should know what type of drainage systems you have on your site and make sure you have a detailed up-to-date drainage plan with all the drains shown on it. Roadside drains are often connected to the surface water drainage system and anything that goes down these drains will run into streams and rivers near you. If you have a separate drainage system, there are foul water drains to carry sewage and contaminated water to a treatment works. There are also surface or clean water drains that should only carry uncontaminated rainwater. These drain to local rivers, streams or to soakaways in the ground. You may not be able to see the river as it could be a few miles away. You should identify and colour code all manholes, gullies and grids to reduce the risk of pollutants entering surface water drains. Red should be used for foul water drains, blue for surface water drains and a red C for combined drainage systems. Everyone should be made aware of the colour coding and what it means. You should check your drainage plan before any new building work is carried out on site to make sure connections are made to the right drainage system and that they're added to the drainage plan. Check you have no wrong connections from existing facilities such as mess rooms, canteens, laboratories and washing machines. Pollution incidents can devastate wildlife habitats and put human health at risk. Good working practices are essential on your site for the delivery and handling of materials such as oils, chemicals or foodstuffs. A spillage can cause pollution as well as wasting your valuable raw materials. Make someone responsible for supervising all deliveries and that delivery areas are marked and isolated from surface water drains. Identify transfer routes and keep them clear. 
Pipelines should be sited above ground where possible. Protect underground pipelines from corrosion or damage and regularly test them to make sure they aren't leaking. Check the condition of your storage containers and how much is in them before every delivery. Label all containers with what they contain and their capacity. Fit automatic cut-off valves on delivery pipes to reduce the risk of spillage. Have contingency plans and emergency equipment to deal with any accidents and make sure everyone knows about them. You should take particular care with any surface water drain at risk from oil pollution. Oil can cause big problems. As little as 5 litres can cover an area of water the size of two football pitches. Safe storage of materials, such as oils and chemicals on your site, is necessary to prevent pollution. You should make sure storage containers are sited away from drains or watercourses. The containers must be suitable for the materials stored, in good condition, clearly labelled and not likely to leak. You should store liquids within a secondary containment system, such as a bond, preferably under a roof to avoid collecting rainwater. If you don't, the rainwater may have to be disposed of by a registered waste carrier. Regularly check that the containment system isn't leaking and that no liquid from the tank or pipes can get outside the system. Make sure that any above-ground oil storage complies with relevant laws. Place oil separators on any surface water drain that may be at risk from oil spills. The separators should be properly designed, large enough to contain a spillage, and properly maintained. You should use secure fences, lock gates and doors, and where possible, store materials in secure buildings or under cover. Storage containers should have locks fitted on all outlets which are locked shut when not in use. An increasing number of pollution incidents are caused each year by vandalism and theft. You should site storage facilities above ground where possible. Underground storage means faults are difficult to find and there is an increased risk of pollution that can cost much more to clean up. Leak detection systems may be a legal requirement on underground storage to prevent pollution of rivers or drinking water supplies stored in rocks underground. Reducing how much waste you produce will save money and resources. Making sure that you store and dispose of your waste properly is an essential pollution prevention measure. You have a legal duty of care to ensure your waste is properly dealt with. You must check what legal controls apply to the waste you produce. Carry out a waste review on your site with free independent help from the Environment and Energy Helpline. The review will help reduce the amount of waste you produce and identify what you can recycle. The less waste you make, the less money you lose. You must ensure that all wastes, including litter, cannot cause pollution of water, land or air. Store your waste safely in a designated area that's completely isolated from any surface water drains or direct discharge to the environment. If you have liquid wastes, the area should be able to contain spillages. If you have a rubbish compactor, keep it in the designated area as they often leak a polluting liquid. Ensure you separate different types of waste in containers that are properly labelled to show whether they contain general, recyclable or hazardous materials. You have a duty to ensure that the contractor who removes your waste is registered and told what kind of waste it is. Preventing pollution from wastes comes down to common sense, general good housekeeping and staff training. We all know that burning any waste is harmful to the environment, but did you know that if you burn certain waste material, you could also be breaking the law? Liquid wastes produced on your site are known as trade effluents and must be disposed of very carefully to avoid pollution of surface water drainage systems, rivers or groundwater.
Even discharges you may think are clean, such as cooling water, steam condensates, and pressure testing liquids, are classified as trade effluents. The best environmental option is for your trade effluent to be discharged to public foul sewer systems. You must get permission from your local sewer provider before making a discharge. They may set conditions on the quantity and quality of the effluent. If you don't get permission, contact us for advice. You should ensure trade effluent discharge points are marked on your site drainage plan. Clearly marked areas separated from surface water drains for all washing or cleaning operations should also be provided. Don't let any dirty water containing any cleaning agents used to wash vehicles, plant, floors or containers go down surface water drains as it will cause pollution. If you need to dewater parts of your site, test the water first to find the best way to dispose of it. Don't pump silty water direct to a river, stream, road or surface water drain as this stops fish breathing, covers plants and can cause flooding. Ask your sewer provider or us for advice before you do any pumping. Groundwater is stored in porous rocks from which over a third of our drinking water is taken. Although we cannot see groundwater, we can't forget about it. Groundwater is a valuable resource and must be protected from pollution because it's used for drinking water, farming and industrial processes. You will need to get advice from us if you're going to store, handle, use or dispose of certain substances such as chemicals, fuels or solvents that could pollute groundwater. There are legal requirements that you must follow if you store these kind of substances. Codes of practice have been written to help you understand what you need to do. These include guides for underground storage tanks and the use and storage of solvents. Make everyone aware of how a careless or thoughtless action could damage groundwater supplies and put our health and the environment at risk. You must clean up a spill promptly, remove any contaminated soil and dispose of according to waste legislation. Just one litre of solvent can contaminate a hundred million litres of drinking water. That's enough to fill 50 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Groundwater pollution can be very difficult and expensive to clean up. The cost could be several hundred thousand pounds. Trained and knowledgeable staff can save you both money and time by preventing or reducing the effects of a pollution incident. You should make sure all your staff are trained to be environmentally aware, to apply correct procedures and to respond correctly in the event of an incident that could cause pollution. You should develop a pollution incident response plan to deal with an emergency and test the plan on a regular basis by carrying out simulated exercises. You should also ensure that personal protective clothing and emergency pollution control equipment is readily available and regularly checked by a responsible person. Procedures for the recovery, handling and disposal of all waste materials from an incident or emergency must be provided. If a spill occurs, it must be cleaned up promptly or it could cause a bigger problem. Remove any contaminated materials, including soil, and ensure they're disposed of according to waste legislation. If you have a pollution incident that might damage the environment, call us on 0800 80 70 60 to get expert help. Remember, as well as assisting in an emergency, we are also here to help in preventing pollution, not simply to punish someone who causes it. Follow our advice and you will find that pollution prevention pays by getting your site right.